97.9 The Box, Radio Boss, Hard Body, Kiati. Special day in the city. Uh, I, I keep wanting to say world premiere. <laughs> Season premiere, Empire on Fox, the hometown homie, Kaylin Simone. C- congratulations, first and foremost. We're going to give you the, we're gonna give you the Kevin you. Hart slow clap. Proud of you. <laughs> Thanks. Em- now, I'm going to be honest. I've got to catch up on Empire because I, mm-hmm. I do a lot at night, but I always support my people. So the DVR is now set. Yay. You are... Uh, a, a key character this season on Empire. Yes, my character's name is Treasure. Um, I am working in a prison and get discovered by Cookie Lion, and <laughs> I'm their new artist on the label. So, what did you do to get locked up? Is what we want. Okay, I'm not locked up. I'm just working at the prison. Okay, because I was like, that's gangster. Yeah, like, yeah. Shank this dude two times. He I, tried to take my purse. Okay, I nah, would you. like that. I'm hoping the next role I get to go that you, route. You gotta get you either a superhero cool. role or like a really gangster role. Yes. What if they transform you and make you the new Cookie? See. See, you, we never know. We're going to have to watch this season. See, we should just put those bubbles out. We got to just go air. ahead. I know the, the producers sure. are going to watch this. <laughs> Hook the home. Kiati said it first. Hook you the heard home. it here. <laughs> we need one of them and at the end of the season <laughs> <laughs> with a quick little action. We're looking forward to uh, watching Empire on Fox this season. How did they find out about you? Because you really do sing. If you, They follow yeah. you on Instagram. Your voice is amazing. Thank Give them your you. Instagram one time. Um, at Caitlin Simone, K-A-T-L-Y-N-N Simone. So they found you on, how did they find you? Um, well, you know, I've been acting for a while since like the game, the game. and then I had the quad after that. Um, and I actually feel like most people know me as an actress before singing. Right. Like, you know, even out here in Houston, a lot of people would know me from the game and the quad. Um, and so I just kept posting my videos and my new representation agent and manager, they were kind of like, you know, we just got to start upselling the, the singing part because you're too good at that. To yeah. not <laughs> use it for real, for something you know. So um, yeah, I I knew some of the people that were affiliated with the show, the casting director and everything. They knew me in the acting world. They told me to come in and sing, and they're like, "Okay, you actually can do that. We got the role." So yeah, just like yeah, come yeah. on, <laughs> come on. This is yours. The bag is here. Sign right there. That's really cool. that's cool. I was actually in Houston when I found out I got the role too. Really? Yeah, I was sitting at a hair salon. Get my hair done. We was getting up. We was on slay, slay, slay. Yes, and um, yeah, I was sitting in the, in the in the chair, and they were just like, "Yeah, we." Th- I had like maybe ten people on the phone. That's how you know something important's about to happen. Right. I had ten people on the phone. They're like, "Okay, uh, we got something to tell you. This is your contract. This is what's happening. You're flying out to Chicago next week." I was like, "Whoa, okay." She said, "Oh, I got the job for real, <laughs> for real, real, for real, for real, for real." For real. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Oh, you are actress, actress. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm super proud of you. Thank How's it you. working with Lucius Lyon? Oh, amazing. You know, I, I didn't I don't ever realize until I'm on set mm-hmm. the craziness with working with some of these people. Like the first big deal for me was on the game, I had to work with Brandy. She was my stepmom. Right, right, right. And growing up, she's always been an idol for me. So that was like crazy. But now I'm working with Taraji B. Henson and Terrence Howard. And even uh, freaking Forrest Whitaker is on the show. Mm. I'm like, what the heck? Am I even supposed to be here? But that's big. They literally are just the most humble, sweet, kind people. So it just sometimes you end up forgetting for a split second that you're sitting next to them in a scene and actually working, talking to them. Right. Because they're just normal people that feel like everybody belongs there, you know? Whenever you got your start and you started. So for the people that don't know, let them know what high school you went to in Houston. HSPVA. I went to HSPVA for one year. Unfortunately, I wish I could graduate. But um, after my freshman year, that's when I found out I booked the game on mm. BET. So I had to leave. And I um, I actually started college at the age of 16. So <laughs> I went straight she from HSPVA. To <laughs> she went from high school to the pros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, But I love HSPVA, one of my favorite places. I still brag about it like I graduated from there. I say all the time I wish I did so I could go to my class reunion. What makes <laughs> what makes uh the high school for what is it, visual and performing and performing arts. what makes that different from a normal high school? You know, when I first oh, well, first of all, I'm a huge Beyonce fan. Like Destiny's Child hardcore old school Beyonce fan, so mm-hmm. I always knew that was part of like the reason why I wanted to go there. When I was 10 years old, most people plan their college experience. I planned high school first and then <laughs> college. I was like, HSPVA, HSPVA. Um, and then I got there and I realized that 
it is just it's literally just so advanced as far as like the the whole conservatory feel goes you have these people that are 17 18 younger Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they're literally studying um these plays that you learned in college and like i had to learn how to do backstage experience like the stuff that I would never do now but Mm. I'm so glad that I do know that part of it because you just have respect for the entire process so much better um I was musical theater I didn't get to experience the dance life or the or the actual instrumental people life and everything or the visual art life but I know the amount of work that you put in in that high school Mm. um they always say back in the day you know I don't know what it's like now but I know I was there you know back in the gap you know (laughs) I was there, I remember being at HSPVA until, I don't know, it was way after my parents were off of work, still there rehearsing backstage, like just studying and getting work done. It was just so much fun because it is school, but I you were doing things that you felt like you were in college for, you know? You know, so my daughter, um, I, I've had a few interesting experiences. She wants to act, so I put her like in some drama classes and whenever she goes to school, uh, they do the school play mm-hmm. and it's kind of an adjustment period. Cause of course for drama class, she's a star, she's killing it. But for school, like they turn her down for certain parts and that, Oh, like, I have her. stories you know to I'm tell saying? you on that. So as far as, and I explained to her, I say, and, and man, it's hard for her being, you know, uh, a little black girl, Yes, you know, because 100%. I try to tell her sometimes like, baby, it, honestly, it's not even, it, it's not you. It's just the, the roles that they already in their minds have preset. It's a certain thing they're looking for. 100%. And, you know, so don't feel bad. So I I could just imagine even you just dealing with some of the finding roles and dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Like just some of the, um, what's the right word to say? Because I don't want to say it the right way, the wrong way. Well, I, it, not I really discriminating, you know, just type typecasting. Yeah, or, you know, I I totally like. It's funny that you told me that, just because it is so true to my experience growing up. Um, before I ended up going to HSPVA, I was going to school in Pearland, a suburb, obviously. Right. Okay. And um, I remember crying to my parents at a certain time, and my dad did the same thing that you did, saying yeah. like it's going to change. But um, I think it was Princess and the P. That was the play, the school play. And I wanted to be a princess. And it was like a huge thing. Like I did not get to be a princess, but they let me be the Joker. And I came home crying. I'm like, a Joker is a boy role. I don't understand. (laughs) Like, why would they not cast me as a princess? I sing like it's a musical. Like, Mm -hmm. obviously, I'm killing it, Mm -hmm. whatever. My dad said, you go over there and you play the Joker and you kill everybody with the Joker. The um, drama teacher ended up writing in new songs. I ended up getting my agency basically from that experience wow. <laughs> like people were coming up to us after the school play like hey are you interested in actually doing this and wow it was it was cool but i understand as a little black girl that it can be kind of difficult and kind of discouraging just because people have this idea of what it's supposed to be and what it's supposed to look like right i will say in 2018 it's an awesome time just because especially with theater if you look at plays like King Kong on Broadway and right. um, Chicago, they're putting black lead females in those mm. positions that have never played those roles before right. because they're starting to finally see that color is not really a thing when it comes to storytelling all of the time, you know, mm. especially with these fantasies and everything. It's a right, fantasy. Right. Why can't a black woman be a princess? Why can't a black woman have a power? You know, why why can't that happen? Yeah. So it's a, it's a cool time. I'm actually really excited to see what happens with this. Man. This this happened today, so this is kind of weird. They sent us Bill Cosby today to oh yeah I saw to, that uh, three to ten years. I, yeah, I did see that for you know. And if you hadn't followed the whole Bill Cosby thing, you know, go you know follow the timeline. I always like people to inform themselves, and you know, I, I don't want to be the one to tell you about the whole case. But Bill Cosby got sentenced three to ten. Right now, there's a a huge movement, the the Me Too movement, mm-hmm. like you know where women are really standing up for their rights. And um, demanding equal pay, mm-hmm. equal treatment. So with you being from Houston, I always pull. I mean, and I, and we met each other when you were way younger. And yeah. I'm always proud of your progress. You. Um, have you been keeping up with the Me Too movement and just some of the equal rights things for female? Um, I mean, other than the fact that I'm in this industry, just living in Los Angeles now, it's kind of hard not to keep up with it. You know, right. it's so, so prevalent out there. Everybody's very um i would i would just say there's a lot of 
um, protests and, and movements going on in that city, of course. Okay. Um, I, I have. I've kept up with it. And I, I have to say that it's definitely, like I said, a better time right now mm-hmm. as far as people are speaking up about certain things and certain people are getting punishments for certain things. Right. Um, as long as it's fair, okay. I'm down. You okay. know, I right. do think that in every industry there's always been an element of uh, shush, shush, you know, like let's just keep the ball rolling, make the money, just push it to the side and I'm just happy to see that a little bit of that moral um that goodness is starting to come back out with everything so people are having to be accountable for their actions exactly exactly that's important no matter what and it's easy to forget when you're making money but you got to keep that around so you you got to keep that moral fabric the right way yeah it's definitely going down empire (laughs) on fox super proud of you pulling for you i will be watching this season thank you Fox, I need y'all to know Houston will be supporting our girl. Just yes. so y'all know, we need the bag to be bigger next season, okay? We just want to throw that out there. <laughs> be sure you follow Kaylin Simone on Instagram. Thank you. The hometown homie we're going to represent right here on The Real Sign of H-Town, 97.9. All the Box. time. Yeah, I'm hardcore Houston. You best believe. She I'm H-Town for real, for real, for yeah. real. H-Town for real. We, gotta get, we was going to put you on the remix, but the way your Empire contract is set up. <laughs> Definitely.